but sometimes you find that um, a film is looked at solely for its content without any regard to the style or manner in which the story is told. And after all, that basically is the art of the cinema. In Alfred Hitchcock's mind, nothing is more important than the audience. Everything is designed specifically to make his movie experience enjoyable for the viewer. Every possible way that could bring you into the story, the better. To draw you in to what the characters care about. One way he draws you in is with faces. That's the first thing you notice as you look through clips of Hitchcock films. The amount of emotions shown on the faces of the characters. Emotion, in Hitchcock's world, is the starting place. It's the ultimate goal of each scene, to get as much emotion as possible out of the characters. In his interview with film director and critic Francois Truffaut in 1962, Hitchcock explained, The size of the image is important to the emotion, particularly when you're using that image to have the audience identify with it. So he used differences in proximity to the actor's face to get the emotional impact he wanted out of a scene. By zooming in, he could show that a character was suspicious. Or by using a wide shot, he could show emotional distance between the characters. The closer you get to an actor's face, the more emotion you'll get. Hitchcock selectively used close-ups and wide shots in order to control the intensity of a scene. Almost like a composer selecting notes for his score. You'll notice that it's not done with dialogue. From his beginnings in silent films, Hitchcock believed that a story must be told in visuals. In those days, there was no voice track, and the dialogue had to be shown with printed words on the screen. Filmmakers learned to tell the story visually so they could minimize the number of titles that would interrupt the action. Hitchcock said that when sound finally did come to film, it caused a flood of stage plays that were transformed to the screen. Movies suddenly became dialogue-oriented. But Hitchcock maintained that film is, most importantly, a visual medium. He said, when we tell a story in cinema, we should resort to dialogue only when it's impossible to do otherwise. So he uses the camera every chance he gets to reveal the story with objects, panning to each one in sequence. Dialogue just isn't as important. Good example of visual cinema, this a scene from Rear Window, there's the street. This is the apartment complex. And we pan inside to see Jimmy Stewart sleeping. And we see he has a cast on his leg, so obviously he can't go anywhere. So he's confined to a chair. We go over to his camera. See some photographs. An explosion. Some other photographs. A war. So he must be a photographer. There's another camera, a flash, will appear later in the story. Now there's a woman, which is on the cover of a magazine, introducing us to the Grace Kelly character, which becomes a prominent role in the movie. In other words, we don't have pages to fill, or uh, pages from a typewriter to fill. We have a rectangular screen in a movie house. So what's wrong with dialogue? Nothing, really. Hitchcock says, people don't always express their inner thoughts to one another. A conversation may be quite trivial, but often the eyes will reveal what a person thinks or needs. He does it with point-of-view shots. See, I'm a, what they call a purist in terms of cinema, 
as much as I can. Now, I'm inclined to go for the subjective. In other words, the point of view of an individual. So that visually, you do a close-up of him, then you show what he is looking at. Then you cut back to the close-up and you see his reaction. This is a really good sample of the point of view shot, showing Hitchcock's technique on point of view. He sees the car, we see the car. He sees the man, we see the man. And so notice how it goes back and forth. We see him looking, and then we see what he sees. Constantly back and forth. Now here's something that Hitchcock does a lot. As Cary Grant walks forward, his point of view shot also moves forward. And of course, dialogue means nothing. Hot day. Seen worse. By using point of view, you can put anything into the character's mind. In fact, it becomes so effective that the expression of the actor's face really isn't all that important. For example, we can use this reaction shot from Jimmy Stewart in Rear Window. In this version, we're showing him looking at a man with his dog outside. Okay, now we can replace the shot of the dog with a good-looking woman. Same reaction shot of Jimmy Stewart. Suddenly, we perceive his thoughts differently. That's the power of point of view. The emotion is portrayed less by acting, and more with what Hitchcock calls pure cinema. Hitchcock takes that a step further with montage. Montage editing is when a scene is divided into close-ups and shown in succession. This is the way we perceive things in our mind. We see snapshots of details, and then we combine them together. Hitchcock used montage especially during conflict. He said if you're going to show two men fighting with each other, you're not going to get very much by simply photographing that fight. More often than not, the photographic reality is not realistic. The only way to do it is to get into the fight and make the public feel it. Dial! In this example from Rear Window, you can see how montage editing is put to use, showing us bits and pieces of the conflict and all those involved, converging into a scene filled with tension. into the mind of the audience. 